Quintessentials, more rainy. Welcome back. So I'm carrying on with the tender writing proposal series. You've made it through from stage one where you submitted your tender proposal. It was evaluated by a panel and the agreement was that let's call these people in for a pitch. That's usually a great sign when you make it to stage two. Making it to, making it to the pitch phase is really, really a it's a really big deal. It's like when you're doing a driver's license and the instructor says, let's go outside. Then you know, okay, this thing is in. Clearing the pitch is literally now you selling yourself in person. They want to meet you. It's more like at that interview phase where the client wants to get to know you, the meet and greet basically. So go in and you make a good impression. I'm gonna start with the superficial, which is also quite important. We can't downplay it, which is aesthetics. How do you look? You need to look professional. Obviously, when you're going into a pitch and you are going with your team, I know some of us, you know, we are agency execs or we work in very carefree, creative environments. But when you are pitching, you have to look a certain way. You need to go in there. You need to look corporate, wear your jacket, wear your blazer, suit, tie, or maybe even an open um, shirt if you're a guy. But it's very important that you look the part, you need to sell yourself. Secondly, um, and I would recommend that you discuss with your team um, what it is that you actually are gonna wear so that you are in alignment. I think black is a great color for when you are presenting anything um, so that it's not too distracting and you are all in uniformity. It's clean, it's slick, it's simple and it's less fast. And then, in addition to looking the part, you need to be friendly, be warm, be inviting. Remember to smile, be professional, of course, um, but be warm. Go to the client, greet them, give them a handshake, introduce yourself, tell them your name. And if you are going with a team, which I highly recommend that you do, because it gives you more credibility, it gives you a better chance of succeeding because nobody wants to work with a one-man show. Have about two or three of your top execs or if you don't have execs your 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 team your employees and brief them on how it is that they need to conduct themselves during this pitch make sure that you have your presentation on a memory stick it's saved the correct version is saved by a memory stick specifically for this pitch so that there's not a whole lot of things that are going on and you are searching and you are lost and you're confused and you're frazzled because the last thing you want to be doing is to be frazzled. Oh, and very important, you have you must make sure that you are on time. Get there 30 minutes earlier so that you are settled. You can get your mind right. You can prepare yourself. You don't want to be rushing there. You're sweating. You're like... No, you don't want that. Make sure that you are prepared. If you have notes, they're printed out, they're ready, you have rehearsed. I also highly recommend that you rehearse your presentation with your team prior the actual pitch because it just helps with the flow. Or at least if you are all working on the document and different people are presenting different sections, you can rehearse separately, but look at the document be familiar with it be able to speak off the cuff nobody wants to be looking at somebody that's reading something off a computer because if we are all in the room we can all read you need to be dynamic you need to bring character you need to be exciting rehearse your pitch with your team prior to even arriving in that boardroom what's also important is to remember the names of the people in the panel Try by all means, either you take names, you write them down. I, there's nothing wrong with you taking a piece of paper and writing down the names of each person from the panel so that when you are responding to them, you can refer to them by their names. Addressing people personally brings an added human touch, which is what you want. You want to make a human connection because ultimately this will be your client. You'll be working with them daily or regularly. So... You want to start building that rapport from the from the first introduction. Your presentation should be on PowerPoint. Make sure that your presentation is not too long. I would keep it to 10 slides, 15 max, but it also depends on the time limit that you have been given for your specific pitch because they are probably, it is most likely that there will be other candidates that are being scheduled after you. So 
you don't want to be going on for too long you want to also leave time for Q&A to respond to questions and and respond to the panel your presentation really shouldn't be more than 15 to 20 minutes and then leave 5 to 10 minutes for Q&A if you have been al allocated half an hour let's say your presentation it goes without saying should look professional if you are able to get the logos and the corporate identity of the organization that you are bidding to then it's it would be great for you to incorporate them in your presentation just so that you personalize your response um, in the pitch and they can see that you've taken the time and you understand their their corporate identity and you are responding to it as a first step in your presentation so it shows that you've done the research and really for me it's an appropriate response to a bid if it's possible incorporate animation incorporate a video even if it's like a two minute video that's you know punchy that tells a story that will also invigorate the q a section but let your presentation be lively it can't be too text heavy more than anything your your presentation needs to be aligned to what you have placed in the actual technical work plan so you've taken everything that you've put in your scope of work and your 10 minute 15 minute 20 minute pitch is you basically sharply responding to the points that you have listed in that tender proposal in that bid document and making sure that both documents are coherent but of course the presentation has to be more succinct it has to be sharp it has to hit all the right notes so the story you were telling in your bid document needs to be in synergy with the story that you are still communicating in your bid because the two document the two the two need to speak to each other the two must align uh, if you did bid and you did mention that you have black employees then they should be present in the pitch they should be present in the executive they should be present in all stratospheres of your business they should be present in the pitch and they should be given a voice to speak so if you are fronting obviously you're going to be found out there should be a representation of black individuals in your business and you are giving them a voice during the pitch not just for the purposes of creating a certain impression but, but it should actually be part of the organizational culture if you get what i'm saying so have a diverse group of people that are present with you for your pitch if that is what you actually indeed indeed did pitch in your original bid if that's not what you pitched then your team is not just simply BEE representatives, but they need to showcase that they are subject matter experts. Let's say, for instance, you have been called back for a tender that was speaking to communication strategy development, account management, content development, social media. My recommendation would be that you should have a content management specialist present. You should have your account director who will speak to you know the strategy development you should have your social media manager that's also present that will speak to the social media aspect um or a pr specialist that can speak broadly on the topics that i've listed and don't be too uptight in your presentation you know allow for humor tell a few jokes you know when a room when people are laughing in a room and you are smiling obviously when you're smiling people smile back if you tell a joke even if it's corny people will laugh because i mean it's just social etiquette to to laugh so create a warm environment by diffusing any you know nerves by joking make sure your jokes are appropriate but keep them light and focus don't derail too much and be too familiar but create a warm environment within that space that you will be presenting in so that your personality shows, your team's personality shows, and also you get to see different sides of the panel, you know, based off um, what you're giving off because people feed off each other. If you're tense and uptight, it's gonna make the room very cold, tense and uptight. You need to loosen up and smile. If you're nervous, that's that's literally my advice that I can give you. Smile. There's there's definitely a smile definitely lightens up the room if you feel like you don't have that um, humorous comedic ability. And then of yeah. course, lastly, leave some room for Q and A. As I've mentioned, you can either pose a question as a start or you can 
may, maybe by the time you finish your presentation, the panel has already noted down some questions that they want to ask you. You have that option to either ask the questions or allow the panel to lead with the Q&A and allow each subject matter expert to respond to each of the questions so that everyone is given a voice and perhaps if you feel like you're nervous or you don't know how to respond maybe take a glass of water drink give yourself time to think i mean these are the usual interview tricks that we've we we use when we were looking for jobs so this is no different when you're looking for work um as a business owner right take that time drink water, give yourself time to think. If you're struggling, then you can use your body language to communicate to your other team members that oh, maybe this, maybe you can take this. Or you can even just bluntly say, I'd like so-and-so to take this question because they are subject matter experts in this field. One thing you should never say though is you don't know. You find a way to frame your answers in such a way that you don't leave the client feeling as though they cannot trust you with an assignment or they are unsure about your capabilities. And also, don't overpromise and then you cannot deliver. Find a balance, but like I'm saying, use each other, especially if it's a team effort, you're not alone. It's not like you're going in there by yourself. If you can't respond, surely one of your, your team members will be able to respond and just find clever ways of responding to tricky questions. So that is really my advice in terms of, you know, the second phase of the bid evaluation. By the time you've been called in for an interview, it means that you have something to offer. More than anything, it's very important that you sell yourself, sell your personality, sell your skills. They've seen your CVs, they've seen your writing abilities, they've seen the pitch on paper. You need to bring it to life. Tell that good story and Kazimla, shine bright. I hope this information has been helpful and let me know how your bits have been going and maybe nowadays things are happening virtually. So. Is there um, anxieties about bidding online rather than in person? What experience been in this area? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share, subscribe and see you in my next videos. Thank you, Quintessentials. Mwah.